raisins as well, which you can do. I don't like raisins, so I'm not going to be adding them. Um, so we'll do those two dishes and it'll be delicious. So before we start, as always, welcome to my kitchen. Um, I hope everyone is doing well and I hope that um, the whole lockdown thing isn't causing anybody too many um, issues or worries. Um, so before we start, as always, I like to say a very warm welcome to you all. So if you have just joined us, please do say um, a quick hello, give us a wave, let me know where you are tuning in from and let me know if you are planning to cook along um, today. One of the things I realised actually is that there's quite a few of you who watch it um, live, which is lovely, and then you go off and you cook it over the weekend. So I, I last week I got lots of images and pictures coming through all throughout the week, which is just lovely to see. So thank you for those. Thank you for sharing those pictures with me. So who do we have? Have we got lots of people waiting? We've got Andrew Sherman from Weymouth has said. Hi He's Andrew. Got here, um, the onions are chopped in, in the new chopper and it took seconds. Woo, I'm glad you liked it. it. Um, welcome Andrew. Um, you're cooking this week. You weren't cooking last week. I remember you had southern fried chicken last week. Um, welcome, lovely to have you join and lovely for you to be cooking along. Um, you mentioned that you bought yourself one of my choppers, didn't you? And you loved it, which is great. So I'm really pleased. That's always a good thing. Who else have we got? We've got Daniel from Lisbon. Not cooking, but give him time, he says. Hi, Daniel from Lisbon. Welcome. Lovely to have you join us. Um, yeah, watch along and then you can cook along um, later in the week if you like. But um, just get used to the format and then hopefully one Friday we'll have you cooking along live with us as well. Who else? Jenny has said, hi there, cooking along with you in hi, my Jenny. tiny kitchen from Plymouth. First time watching live, I'm so excited. Hi Jenny from Plymouth, lovely to have you join us. Welcome and you're gonna be cooking along, how exciting. Um, um, remember, if this is the first time that you're cooking along and I got a few of these questions over the week, um, do I need to prep everything beforehand? Um, all I will say is that do a little bit of prep. I mean, all the cooking we do do live, but do a little bit of prep because it just helps you keep a little bit calm. So I quite often get, um, I quite, what? Sorry. I quite often get um, um, people saying that they had a little bit of a traumatic time because it was so quick and they were all over the place. If you do a little bit of prep, if you get bits and pieces chopped, it just means that the flow and the uh, you know for you is a little bit easier um if i go too quickly or if i go too slowly please do just comment away and let me know because i will hold back um a few people said last week that it was too quick and then a few other people said it was too slow so please do let me know and i'll try and um stay with you as we're cooking through so who else have we got We've got Marion's listening in Hi, from Marian. Norwich for the first time. From Norwich, first time joiner. Welcome, lovely to have you join. And we've also got Laura is her first time on live chat. She's at work. Hi, Laura, you're at work. What are you doing? Tell us what you're doing. It'd be lovely to hear um, what you're up to in the working got world. Michael is here from Central Italy. He's cooking it later in the week. Hi, Michael from Italy. Welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. I hope you enjoy week. Remember, when you do cook it, I still want photographs. We've got Mark's just got home in time, is cooking it on Sunday. Hi Mark, you're cooking on Sunday. We've got oh. Amanda's cooking in Yorkshire. Hello Amanda, lots of people from all over the UK, which is amazing. Mm. Linda in Arizona and Sandra in snowy Scotland. Linda in Arizona, welcome. Lovely to have you join all the way from Arizona and we've got Sandra, Sandra in, snowy, in Scotland. snowy Scotland. God, you've had a lot of snow up there. Um, oh, my son is really, really jealous because we've had no snow here at all. But it's been really cold, but we haven't had any snow. And he doesn't see the point of cold weather without snow. So I hope you're enjoying that cold up there. And then um, Eric is in cold and icy Madrid, watching tonight cooking in the weekend. Hi, er Eric, was it? Hi, Eric, in Madrid. Um, I th did you join last week? I think you did. And it was snowy then as well. So um, keep yourself warm and I hope you enjoy cooking this later. 
Brom Wolf has said, evening Babs, not cooking along tonight. We'll do it for tea after the big game tomorrow. Oh, big game tomorrow. You'll be cooking it after that. Well, well let's, fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> Johnny said, I'm going to make it hot. I've still got coronavirus, but I can't taste it too Oh, long. Johnny, you're still suffering with coronavirus. Right. This is a good thing to hopefully blow those bugs away. Um, yeah, add, you can add a little bit more chilli if that's going to help. But hopefully it'll be quite flavoursome. So... Fingers crossed it, you get something through with it. Well, welcome, welcome all of you. It's lovely to have you join. Um, so as I said, we are doing two dishes. We're cooking a um, spinach chicken curry, if you like. So it's a chicken curry and then we're gonna add some spinach into it and it's just lovely, just melts into that masala really, really beautifully. And then we're gonna make a rice dish. Um, in terms of the recipe, so I shared the recipe with you all on Wednesday. Um, I did have a couple of questions and I've had a few people fretting as well. So in terms of the volume of spinach, um, 800 grams seems like a lot of spinach. Absolutely is quite a lot, but spinach will cook down. And because we're going to be blitzing this, we're going to add that into the masala and that is going to make that gravy. So um, don't worry if you don't have that much. I'm not cooking that much. I've got about... 300 grams there um, if you haven't got that much it's fine don't worry about it it's 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 all good um, so before we start I'm just going to talk you through um, the ingredients that I've got here so we have got um, I've got my masala daba which I have every week my trusted spice tin um, I've got my onions I have got um, an Indian bay leaf which is the, the cassia leaf. I've got some cloves in here and I've got these. Now, I hope most of you've got them for the recipe. If you haven't, that's fine. So these are black cardamom. Um, and if, you, if it's the first time you're using them, um, I would urge you to have a little smell because they are really, really smoky, really earthy in their flavor. So they're very different. So it's a different plant from a green cardamom. Um, black cardamom, what black cardamom does is it adds almost like an earthy, meaty, smoky flavour to your dish. And it'll just sit at the back of the dish and it'll just release these lovely aromatics. Um, so it's great in really meaty dishes, it's great in rice dishes, um, but it's just that lovely scent that it gives off is just wonderful. Um, so those are the spices, the key spices that are going into the curry. And then obviously we've got our ginger, we've got our garlic. I'm using two green chilies um, and I've got my chicken. So I've opted for chicken thighs that are on the bone because I love cooking chicken that's on the bone. I just think it gives a better flavour. Um, if you're using breast meat, that's absolutely fine. If you're using thigh fillets, that's absolutely fine too. Um, you just need to adjust the cooking times. So it won't take as long as my thigh on the bone will. Um, if anybody's cooking a vegan or vegetarian option, please do let me know on the chat because obviously the cooking time will be slightly different. Um, a great um, alternative is um, something like potatoes and chickpeas works really well with this so you can put your potatoes in when you make your masala um, as they start to cook add the chickpeas and then mix in the the spinach later um, you could use tofu if you wanted to go for a vegan option um, you could use paneer if you wanted to um, so there's lots and lots of different things that you can do and with all Indian dishes I always say that I will always give you an alternative because um, for those who might be doing veganuary, for those who are vegan, for those who are vegetarian, there are always options when it comes to Indian food um, in terms of, you know, changing the ingredients around. Rosemary said she's doing chickpea and potatoes. Oh, hi Rosemary, you're doing chickpea and potatoes. So just so you know, you need to put your potatoes in first into that masala um, just let them soften and cook um, and then we add your chickpeas in a little while but we can I can talk you through that as we're cooking um, <coughs> and say hello to Cornell from Ontario hi Cornell from Ontario welcome lovely um, to have you join me in my kitchen we've got 
Amen from Iran. Hi, Amen, all the way from Iran. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, um, let me know if you're cooking or just watching for today. A couple of questions. So we've got questions coming through, and I haven't said this yet, but if you have any questions at any point, this is your opportunity to get the most out of me, so please do ask away. Um, Leslie's asked, can you use a cinnamon stick instead of cassia bark? Um, absolutely. So um, cassia and cinnamon are very, very similar. Um, they have a slightly different aromatic, um, but they're very similar. And you can use one um, instead of the other. Absolutely fine. And then someone's saying, only because I didn't have chicken in the fridge, I'm doing a large packet of firm tofu. That's fine. Absolutely fine to do tofu. It'll be delicious. So, yep. And then Alejandra said, an hola from Ireland and hola would like a Ireland. vegan option. Pardon? A vegan option. You want to talk, ask me for a vegan? She's asked for a vegan Oh, option. a vegan option. So um, in terms of the dish itself, the dish, the, the, the basic bit of the dish is all vegan. Um, you can just substitute anything in for the chicken, which obviously isn't vegan. Um, so you could use potatoes and, coli um, potatoes and um, chickpeas is a really good option. Um, you could use tofu. You could use um, something a little bit more robust. If you've ever used seitan, that kind of um, protein, if you want to go for the other sort of um, proteins, or if you want to stick with veggies, aubergine will work, um, jackfruit will work. But um, if you just want to keep it really simple, potatoes and chickpeas are really good options for um, a, ve a vegan option of this dish. Okay, are we all good? Is everybody ready to go? Yeah? Okay, so what we're going to be doing first of all, so I'm gonna just change, oh, I've got a question. Rosemary's asked, what can I use instead of the black cardamom? Um, if you haven't got black cardamom, that's fine. If you've got, um, you could, if you wanted to, use green cardamom or just miss it out. It's absolutely fine, don't worry about it. It's just one of those things, not everybody will have it and with a lot of Indian food, okay, it might change the flavour a little bit, but it's not going to have a detrimental effect on it. So don't worry too much, just miss it out. And then Amin saying, I did fish finger and Mexican potato. Fish finger and Mexican potatoes for your dinner. Sounds interesting, yum. Okay, so to get going, um, in terms of the recipe that you've got, I'm just going to turn it around slightly because what I want to do for the sake of time is get that chicken going first and then we'll come back and do the spinach because that won't take very long to cook um, and then it means we can move on to the rice whilst the chicken is cooking. So to get going, first thing we need to do is we need to get our onions chopped and as always the easiest way to do this is in the little chopper which so many of you have, have, um, have told me that you've bought. Doesn't it save you mountains of time? It's amazing. So I'm using um, three, my onion's quite small this week, so I've got three onions that I'm using. If you've got two big ones, that's absolutely fine. So whilst I'm gonna be chopping that, I'm gonna get my heat on, and I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of oil into my pan. Now, I'm not gonna go on about how much I love this chopper, but it does save so much time. It literally, that's all you need to do. It's just amazing. I love it. So I'm gonna add my third one in as well. Andrew Sherman, you share your pictures of your onion with me. Obviously, most of the time I would chop my onions up, but it's just quite, oops, put the, Put the end in. Um, it's quite, uh, put the other end in. You can tell it's Friday, can't you? Right. And ideally with this dish, we want to get our onions as fine as possible. So if you are chopping them, try and get them really, really fine because when you put that in with the spinach, you want it all to be a quite a smooth sauce. You don't want great big chunky bits of onion in there. And I'll show you what it looks can like. Can you just talk about the canacon and the way people can get that? Oh, is there other people asking questions? Okay, so um, I get asked a lot about this. So this um, is my onion chopper, which I absolutely love. 
Um, and at the moment, I'm doing some work with this brand called Kern Ricon. Um, and they are a Swiss brand and they specialize in kitchen equipment. Um, and those of you who know me know I love my kitchen equipment. So these guys I'm working with at the minute, um, they have very, very kindly um, said to me that any of my followers um, who wish to purchase any of their equipment just need to go to the website. So whether you're in the US or the UK, you go to their website, which is Kern, K-U-H-N, R-I-K-O-N, and I'll put the information on the web, um, on the chat, kernricon.co.uk or .com, um, and this is called a pull chopper. Um, if you go to their website, it's on discount at the moment anyway, because they're doing a sale, but at the checkout, if you type in Harry Gotra 20, you get another 20% off. So we'll put all of that information in the chat. So please do have a look. It's well worth it. And it's not just off this, it's off all of their equipment. So please do have a look um, because if you need anything for the kitchen, now is the time to buy it because there's just massive discounts on. And then with that extra 20%, happy days. And look at that. That's what I want to show you. I just think it's amazing how quickly. Now you're gonna take a quick picture of that. So get your onions all chopped up beautifully. So before we add them in, so now my oil is nice and warm. We don't want it too hot. We want it nice and um, warmed. So we're gonna add our spices. So the first thing we want to do is just pop those whole spices in there. So my cardamom goes in, my bay leaf and my cloves. Now, whenever we're toasting our spices like this at the beginning of the cooking process, the purpose for doing that is because we want the oil to pull out the aromatics, pull out those um, lovely oils that sit inside the spices and just fragrance the oil. So when you are doing this at home, if ever you burn your spices at this stage, you need to throw them away and start again. OK, so it's really, really important. Um, what I say to most people is as soon as you can smell them, as soon as you can smell the aromatics being released from your spices, you know you're ready to go in with your, your next ingredient. So keep an eye on it. And as soon as you can smell it, which should be now, you'll start to get those lovely aromatics, warming aromatics coming through. Then you want to go in and put in your onions. So I'm just gonna add my onions in now. And give that all a stir so that you get all the onions and the oil mixing up beautifully together. And the reason you do that is as soon as you, when you put your onions in, you're going to cool that pan right down. So it's going to stop the spices burning, but it's also going to help to draw out the moisture from the onion. So whenever you put your onions in at the beginning, you would do it on a high heat. And what happens is you draw the moisture out of the onions. That's the stuff that makes you cry and all of, all of that stuff. Um, and then you turn it down and then you let it saute a little bit. So keep an eye on it, but that's gonna take some cooking. Now with this dish, we do wanna get a little bit of color to our onions, so they're gonna take some cooking. Um, whilst that's doing that, I'm going to get all of my other bits prepped and ready. So into this, um, I've got six cloves of garlic here. I think I say five in the recipe. Um, I like quite a lot of garlic, so I'm going to pop that in and just pop that in here. And I'm going to give that a blitz as well in my chopper. I'll do it slowly because if you're chopping, I'll give you a little bit of time to catch up. So garlic cloves, nice and chopped. And I just wanna show you what they look like so that you can see. Let me just use that so you can see. So a few little pulls and they just chop up beautifully. Lovely. Put that back in, give it another little 
pull. Now, give your onions a stir. And what I tend to do is, once they cook down a little bit, once the initial moisture has come through, and you'll see it, it all sort of evaporates, and, that, and then you stop crying. And um, that's when I go in with my garlic, because I want my garlic to cook. I don't want that rawness in there. But I'll put it in once the initial onion has sort of cooked through. So that is going to go in in a minute. Have we got any questions? Are we all good? Okay. Is everybody with me for now? Because we've only just started. I don't want to lose you along the way. If I'm going too fast, please do let me know. Okay. So I am going to pop my garlic in in a second. You want to see the inside of my pan? Shall I show you how it looks? So at the moment we haven't got a lot of colour on there, but it's nice and dry. Is, so your, is your mic against your top? Is it rustling? No, it's gone quieter, they said. Can you hear me? Mm, I'm not sure. Let me know if you can't hear me and we can do a little adjust. Let me know, put some comments down if I've gone very quiet. That will um just got some technical technical people in the room. Hang on a minute, I'm gonna sort the sound out. Can you hear me? Let me know. We've just had a little adjust. Okay. So into that, I'm going to add my garlic, which I've just chopped up. Give that all a mix through. Oh, yum. I love garlic. It just smells so amazing. There we go. I was just going to say that. Can I get this one? We're you having... Okay, we're just going to swap mics because it seems to be a problem. Can you hear me? Somehow I managed to turn it off. I pressed the button. Getting in trouble. Is that better? I just wait for the okay before I carry on. Have a little drink of water. Is that better?
See, still on the water. Dry January. Are we all back? Yep. Sorry about that, guys. Don't know what happened there. Okay. So my onions are cooking away. Um, I'm going to get my chilies and ginger ready. So a lot of people ask me, um, or a lot of what cooks will do is they will put their ginger and their garlic in together, which is fine if that's how you do it. Um, but for me, I like to put my garlic in first because I want that rawness to cook through. And the thing with ginger is ginger can be quite fibrous and if you put it in too early, it can burn on the bottom of your pan. So I tend to just add it once my liquid has gone in. So I've got my ginger here and I'm using two chilies. So two chilies and before you ask, seeds and all. Um, if you don't want it as hot, just use less chilies. Indian food isn't, and I say this every week, Indian food isn't just about lots of chilies, lots of heat and blowing your head off. It's about flavour and aromatics. Um, there does need to be a little bit of heat in there because you've got to know once you've eaten the curry, right? Um, so I've got two chilies. Same thing. And I'm telling you, this thing is brilliant. Look at that. Super easy, super quick just brilliant I hope you agree with me Andrew have you been using yours today oh well hang on there we go right now if your onions catch on the bottom of your pan which mine are just starting to do all you need to do is just put in a little splash of water Now what that does is it deglazes the pan, it lifts everything off the bottom, it cools the pan down and it stops the onions from burning but it also helps them to start browning a little bit. Um, don't keep adding oil, you don't want to have a greasy dish really, you, you want it to be nice and vibrant so just add little splashes of water in there. Okay so that's looking good, starting to get a little bit of colour. Um, can you guys tell me if you're still with me um, and if you're starting to get a little bit of colour to your onions because hopefully you should be and I'll just show you what my pan looks like. Let's have a look. So you're starting to get a bit of colour there and it should be smelling amazing already. Michael has said, greetings Harry and Dawson from Stockholm, Sweden. Where do I find the ingredients for this before next Friday so I can join you? Um, so the plan is, what I do um, for all of my cook-alongs is on a Friday, uh, sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> um, for every cook-along on the Wednesday before, um, I will post the recipe and the ingredients that are required for that recipe and I post them on YouTube so what you need to do is you need to is it the little bell you need to so you need to turn on you need to subscribe to my channel you need to click on the little bell and every time I put anything up you'll get an alert and that alert on the Wednesday means that the ingredients and the recipe has been posted and it gives you a list of everything that you need I also post the um, recipe that we're going to cook on Instagram I post it on the app, so if you haven't got my app, please download the app, all the information is on there. Where else do I put it? I put it on Facebook, um, so I try to cover all bases, um, and I do that on the Wednesday, which means that hopefully you've got enough time to get the ingredients that you need for that cook-along on the Friday. Um, I hope that answers your question, and welcome all the way from Stockholm, it's lovely to have you join us. Okay, so I'm starting to get a bit of colour in there. Um, okay, so if your onions are not quite got colour to them, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold fire. I'm not gonna go storming ahead. Um, we can just use this opportunity to have a little chat. Um, so if you've got any questions, please do keep them coming through. Um, I'm a bit scared to open that because the chilies then catch the back of my throat and I can't. Um, I'll start coughing. I do love it. It's so good. Has Anna, 
have we had any comments from anyone who's bought one and and um i'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think so we've just posted the link we've posted the link um on the chat so just have a look all the information is on there and have you put po and we posted the discount code as well um so do have a look on there um for, for those of you who what's the matter for those of you who um, um, don't follow my other channels, please do follow the Instagram and um, Facebook and so on as well, because all of the information is always there, so you can have a look on that as well. But, right, how are we doing? Have we got any more questions? Any questions whilst we're waiting for people's onions to cook down? Um, whilst we're waiting, I'm gonna get my tomatoes ready with another one of the, the gadgets, which is probably the best tin opener I've ever had in my life. And I'll tell you why, because look at that. And there's no sharp edges, so you don't cut yourself. They're so clever, so clever. But it is um, one of those lovely things. Okay, so I've got my tomatoes ready. Once your onions are lovely and brown, um, we don't want to go too dark, but they need to be sort of cooked down and have that lovely golden colour. Once they've got that lovely colour to them, um, we are going to add our tomatoes and we're going to sort of break those down a little bit. And then we're going to go in with our um, chilies and ground or crushed up um, fresh ginger. And that's going to start to add those lovely aromatics to, to the dish. Okay. How are we doing? Somebody can asks, you can you chop the garlic onion chili and so on in one in one go round? And have you added ginger and chili yet? Okay, so I will So if you wanted to, you could put your ginger, your chilies and your garlic all in there and blitz it and do it all together and add them in one go. That's fine. Um I'm just showing you the way that I do it. So I tend to add my garlic first and then um, I'll put my ginger and my chilies in. Um, and I think the other question was... It was just whether you've added it or not. I haven't added my chilies and my ginger yet. And then... Oh, Tracy says, good morning from Tracy in Australia. It's too early to cook, 5.15am, but I've got my ingredients ready for snack. Well, hello Tracy. I'm so pleased that you've joined. So you set an alarm at five o'clock in the morning in Australia to join us tonight. I'm so privileged to have you join me. Thank you. That's amazing. Um, please do take a picture of when you cook this tonight because I'd love to see it. I'm just, I'm just blown away. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we've got people from Australia. Iran, Canada. Canada, the UK obviously, Spain, Spain Portugal, Portugal. I, think. I think we had somebody from the Netherlands, yeah. we had, usually we get a few people from South Africa joining as well, don't we? Um, we lots of people from the UK. Lots of people, oh I'm so pleased, it's just so lovely um, to have so many people from far and wide join us. Okay, um, so... Gordon has asked, Hello, Gordon. Explain the difference between an Indian bay leaf and an English one. So, an Indian bay leaf and an English bay leaf. Um, Dubai someone from Dubai. Who? What's the name? Have we got a name? Was Kazima. 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 Sorry. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you. Okay, so an Indian bay leaf, and do you know? I don't even know if I've got a a bay leaf in here. My spice drawer. So, an Indian bay leaf. This is an Indian bay leaf. Can you just zoom in? Okay, so this is an Indian bay leaf. An Indian bay leaf is a leaf from the cassia tree. And if you look, the veins run up the leaf like that. Okay? And the flavour that you get from an Indian bay leaf is more, it's more cinnamony, it's more clovey, it's that kind of aromatic that you get. An English bay leaf is a laurel, comes from the laurel plant, um, and it um, 
it's much more piney it's much fresher in its flavor so they are two very 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 different things so in an indian recipe if you are asked for a to, to add bay leaves it's actually an indian bay leaf which is this which is cassia leaf you can buy these in almost all indian grocery stores but you need to have a look at them um because sometimes they will say bay leaf and it's it's laurel whereas an indian bay leaf it's really really important and quite often indian bay leaves can be really big they can be almost you know as big as your hand they're huge um so do take a look good question thank you for asking that um how are we doing are we are we ready to get our tomatoes in so i'm going to pop my tomatoes in now once your liquid goes into that pan it means that you are ready to add your taste and your color spices so that's those are spices that are the colorful spices and the taste spices so i just swill out my um tomatoes with a little bit of water my tomato tin just because that's what my mum used to do so that's what i do um and then into that i'm add my chopped chili and ginger now when you take the lid off this don't inhale because it hits you at the back of the throat and it will make you cough um when you have got your tomatoes in the pan you will notice that the you're here it really reduces in terms of the sizzle so you need to turn your temperature back up because you've cooled that pan right down so we need to get a bit of temperature to it to heat it up again so there we go okay so that's all gone in pop that to the side and let that sit there now everything needs to be mixed through I'm going to use my spoon just to break up some of those tomatoes i tend to use plum tomatoes so whole plum tomatoes um, and then i just break them up you can use chopped if you want to but i just find that with whole plum tomatoes you just get a much nicer thicker masala so into here we're going to add our taste and our color spices so those are your turmeric chili powder so I'm going to use I tend to use um, Kashmiri chili powder and I'm going to put a teaspoon of that in if you want less you can put less in and I put half a teaspoon of um, turmeric in and I'm going to add a little bit of salt and I'm also going to add some ground um, coriander so that gives a real freshness um, what I tend to do is I use the seeds and I grind them. So I'll either grind them in my pestle and mortar or my new gadget here, which is a little spice grinder. And the reason that these are good is if you've got problems with your um, fingers or your dexterity, they're really easy. So there's none of this grinding. It just makes it a little bit easier. So I've now got my coriander seeds in one and I've got some cumin seeds in the other one. And it's brilliant. So about roughly a teaspoon of coriander. Leslie's asked, can you use passata? So you can use passata. So a lot of people ask this about um, using passata. You can do. I, for me, I don't like to because I just think it, it's almost too tomatoey. And what we're aiming for is a masala. We want the flavours of the spices and everything to come through. A passata can be quite um, tomato and quite acidic. Um, so for me, it doesn't really work. If that's what you have and that's what you buy, then I get it. That's fine. Um, absolutely try it. But I prefer to either use fresh tomatoes or tomato tin. It, it's just too concentrated. Um, for me, so that is my personal opinion. Michael's asked, is the pool chopper totally dishwasher safe? Um, the pool chopper, that's a very good question. I'm not 100% sure, but I te um, if you go to their website, it will have all of that information. I'm pretty sure it is. I'll find out for you in the meantime. Um, I, think it, I think it is. I haven't put mine in the dishwasher yet. I just tend, because it doesn't need a lot of washing, you just rinse it out and it's fine. Um, and then a couple of questions. Is this 
be a spice grinder. Uh, someone's asked, can we buy them through you? Dishwasher safe, but the lid can't. Okay, so the... Um, so this is all dishwasher safe, but the lid can't go in. I guess it's because it's the string in there and you don't want it to... Um, so all you need to do is just wipe that. And see, it's not really... doesn't really get very mucky. Um, so that can. And what was the other question, sorry? Can we buy the spice grinders through you? So the spice grinders, again, are Kern Recon, so they are on their website. Um, and again, you get that 20% discount on these as well. So do have a look. Um, it's all on there so again same link and you can get that amazing discount if you want it joe has asked can i find the recipes and ingredients on the website for old live streams um so recipes and ingredients for old live streams absolutely so um I, blah, 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 blah. it depends which one it is all of the live streams that we do are available on youtube so they are here so you if you go through all of the live streams, all of the information for each of the recipes is listed underneath that video. Um, all of the video, sorry, all of the live streams that I have done have been from recipes that are on the website. So they are in both places, yes. If that helps in a roundabout kind of way. Okay, so this should be now at a point where your tomatoes are starting to break down and it's all coming together this is a really important part of when you are cooking a masala or putting anything together because what you want is for the onions the ginger the garlic the chilies the tomatoes that you've put in there to all cook down and melt together to make a really thick almost like a paste it's really really important if at this point you've still got onions floating around um, and it hasn't come together, those are going to stay there throughout that whole dish. You really need this to cook down. So this is quite an important part of the cooking process. And I do tend to use the back of my spoon. If there's any chunky bits of tomato that still haven't broken down, I will encourage them to break down with my spoon. I think I've just splashed every. Oh, it's all right. It's gone on the floor. So that's fine. Okay. Lovely. So that's starting to come together. I'm just going to show you quickly what it looks like. And hopefully your kitchen should be smelling pretty fantastic at the moment. For those of you who don't know, this is actually quite hard work to... You know, it's a heavy pan and I'm literally leaning forwards. Is that... Happy? Oh, leaning forwards just so that you can uh, appreciate it. Right, is everybody with me before I move on? I just want to. Oh, I missed a question. Make sure. Oh, we've got a question. Another question. Yes. Um, well, actually, these two questions join in. One person said, instead of tomato puree, can we use fresh tomatoes? And then someone said, if we make it with fresh tomatoes, what is the quantity? Uh, so the first question was instead of tomato puree can we use fresh tomatoes and then how much yeah so absolutely with any any Indian dish any masala you can use fresh tomatoes instead of using a tomato tin so it wasn't um, the tin that I used wasn't a puree it was um, just tinned tomatoes or canned tomatoes um, th that you can get either chopped or whole um, yes you can use fresh tomatoes I would suggest for something like this um probably about five tomatoes four or five tomatoes um so roughly maybe about 600 grams ish four to six hundred grams should be more than enough um the only thing with um fresh tomatoes and this is specifically if you're in the uk um, they're not always as ripe and as juicy as they are in some of those beautiful places that you guys are. Um, we, our tomatoes don't tend to ripen uh, um, as, as you don't get the sweetness and you don't get that juiciness in them. So you may need to add a little bit of water if you use fresh tomatoes here in the UK. But all of you guys from Dubai and 
Spain and you know you get the most beautiful tomatoes so you know you're 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 all right you're Johnny's all right asked, can you hold the pan out for a few minutes more I, need, I missed that one are you being cheeky are you kidding me just for you Johnny right I'm getting very ready to add my chicken in oh there you go so that's what it should look like everything's broken down there's not any moisture so it's not watery it's fairly thick so my chicken is going to go in now and remember i've got chicken on the bone here so if you've got breast meat or if you have got um um thigh fillets then you probably don't need it to cook as long so my chicken is probably going to take so this is probably going to take uh I know you were joking, but hey, um, about 25 minutes, I would say. If you're using breast meat, 10 minutes. So do keep an eye on your dish, depending on what you have used. If you are doing the vegan option, if you're doing potatoes and chickpeas, you can add your potatoes in now and turn it down because you don't want your, chick you don't want your potatoes to catch on the bottom hopefully they won't because you've got enough moisture in that masala to, so that they don't catch um, and you just coat them all in that masala turn the temperature down i'll start that again if you're cooking meat you want your temperature up really really high you pop your meat in and you stir it coat it with that masala um, and get a little bit of heat to that meat so that it starts to change color essentially what you're doing is you are um uh, what's the word i'm thinking of you are my brain's gone dead um you are <laughs> um searing your meat in that masala so what quite often in in lots of different cuisines you would sort of brown your meat and then add it so what we're doing is we're doing that same thing, but we're doing it in the sauce and we're doing it on a high heat so that we sear it so that it holds its moisture. Um, if you are cooking a veggie option, so if you're putting your potatoes in or if you're doing tofu, obviously you don't need to do that. Um, if you're doing potatoes, you can pop that in and then turn it down and let them just simmer away. You will want to coat them with all of that masala. Um, if you're doing tofu and your masala is cooked down so it's quite dry, you, might, you may need to add a little bit of water as well. So just keep an eye on it for now. Amanda's asked, you didn't add cumin seeds? Um, cumin seeds, are they in the recipe? No garam masala yet? No, no cumin seeds and no garam masala yet. So garam masala I'll talk to you about later. But... Um, I'm going to double check. I'm sure I haven't got cumin seeds in this. Are you, try are you just trying to confuse me? Because you're doing a very good job. Okay, so when your meat is in, we're going to give that... There we go. So, once it's all um, been coated and looks like that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it right down to a really low heat and I'm going to pop the lid on I'm actually going to move it to this side so that that just start, starts to cook down the reason that I've turned it down is that um, when people cook this at home so a lot of people when they are cooking a curry they'll make their masala and they'll add the chicken and then they'll throw loads of water in there and what what you're doing when you do that is you've just spent a lot of time really making an intense masala and just adding lots of aromatics and flavors into that and then you're just diluting it by adding loads of water and what happens to that chicken is it just boils away in that water what we want to happen is the chicken goes in or your meat goes in and you turn it right down and what will happen is it will almost marinade in that masala and all of the flavor all of the 
um, depth, all of the lovely deliciousness will come from that meat. So there'll be an exchange, all the moisture will come out of the meat, the fat will render down and all that flavour will come from that meat and you'll get a sauce and a gravy coming out from the meat that you put in there. Um, and that's where you get sort of that lovely depth of flavour from. So the gravy will cook and it will, it will, it will just be delicious because it'll come all from itself. Um, and then once the dish is cooked, if you want a little bit more sauce or more gravy, you can then add water. But you never, ever, ever just put loads of water in there and let it boil away because you're just diluting everything that you've just done. And I'll come back to that and I'll show you what that looks like because you'll be amazed at how much liquid actually comes out of that chicken itself. So that's doing its thing. Is everybody with me? Debbie, I'll slow down just because it's you and you need to open a bottle of wine. That's fine. In fact, why have you not got it open already? That's very bizarre. Um, okay, so who is with me? Are we all together? Are we all at the same bit? I'm going to have a little sip of water. I wish it was wine, but it's not. How are we doing? All good? Any comments? Is every, anybody rushing around like a lunatic? If you are, just stop for a minute and just let me know um, because obviously I will do what I can to help the process. This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be enjoyable. Um, Eloise is a bit behind just waiting on the chicken searing. And then Hi, Eloise. Nice to have you join. So you are just... Just putting your chicken in. So high heat, get it all coated, get it cooking. Someone's asked, it's just asking if you don't add water to the mixture, will it not stick to the pan? So the whole point of the reason that it won't stick to the pan. So I'm not going to indefinitely say no, it won't stick to the pan. There are lots of factors. One, you could have it too high. Two, it could be in a pan that just catches. Um, but in or you know in general terms and you know you might not have enough chicken in there so if it's just two pieces of chicken it's more likely to catch um but in general terms that's why you turn it right down to the lowest setting so mine is on the very very lowest setting and that what that means is just that slow cook it'll just sort of simmer away in its own juices and the juice will come out of the chicken so therefore it won't catch because you're getting the flavor coming from the meat you're not having to add any more. If you are just cooking, for example, two pieces of chicken just for yourself, then you are more likely to catch. So you just need to then take a look at it and add a little bit of water just to get it going. But I promise you, it, in, you know, if you're cooking the amount that we're cooking there, then it will not stick. Okay, is everybody, has everyone caught up? Is their chi how's their chicken doing? And I'm just going to give mine a little bit of a stir. So before I carry on, I just want to know that you're all happy and you're all with me. And no one's given up or stormed off in tears or anything um, before we move on to the next bit. Are we getting any, any comments? People are busy. Are you busy? If you're not cooking, give us some comments. Come on, guys. It's supposed to be interactive. It's supposed to be um, fun, which is always good. Okay, so the next bit, I won't do it yet until you tell, give me the go ahead. <clears throat> the next bit is the spinach bit. So this is baby spinach. Uh, oh, I just keep throwing it everywhere. Um, so this is just baby spinach. Um, Although the recipe's on your website, doesn't seem to be on the app. Oh, I'm sure it is. It should be. I will double check or I'll get someone to double check. Um, but we'll, yeah, we'll have a look. We can, we'll have a check now, but it should be. Um, so thank you, Sue, for that. Um, so spinach, I'm using baby spinach. You can use um, older spinach or biggest big spinach. Um, if you want to. You could also use kale if you wanted to. So you can use different um, different greens if you want to, but obviously you need to cook them slightly differently. 
Um, all we're going to do with this spinach is we're just going to wilt it and then I'm going to blitz it with my um, ugh, with my blitzer. Okay, if you haven't got one of these, then um, you can put it into a blender. You could even put it into your little thing and you'll get the same result. So whenever I cook spinach like this, um, I know a lot of recipes will say you put it into boiling water or you put it into hot water um, and wilt it and then take it out. And that's fine if that's how you cook spinach. I've never done it like that. And the reason is that I don't want to wash away all of the vitamins and minerals and everything that I've got in here. So all I tend to do is I wash my spinach and it's been washed and you can see that it's still wet. And then I just put it into a pan and it'll just cook down. And then, um, and that's it. That's all I need to do to it. Questions? Um, when my local shop is out of fresh spinach, can you suggest an alternative? Um, so you can buy spinach frozen in little blocks um, and that's absolutely fine to use. It's a, in fact, it's a great little um, ingredient to have in your freezer. I'm an absolute advocate of freezers. I think we just don't use our freezers properly anymore. Um, you can buy spinach frozen. Um, you can freeze it yourself. Um, if um, if you can't find frozen spinach, you can also get it in cans. I would prefer the frozen stuff over the canned stuff. Um, I just don't know how much good stuff there is in tinned spinach once it's been taken to those high temperatures and so on. But you can use tinned stuff. Um, what else could you can use? use frozen spinach in these kinds of yes, things. absolutely. You can use um, frozen spinach in these kinds of dishes. Obviously, if you're using frozen spinach, you don't need to do this bit that we're going to do now. You can just cook your chicken. Once that chicken is cooked through and you're happy, you can just add the frozen spinach straight in um, and just do that final step. Um, and then any more questions before David I get going? Asked, is there much difference between the spinach we get in UK supermarkets and actual sarg? I've seen sarg in our local Asian stores and it looks quite different. It is very different. So sarg... Sarg and spinach, are, although we use that word as the um, translation, it's not. So this stuff, baby spinach, we call barlock. Okay, this is barlock. Um, and sarg is the... So there's two different types of sarg. So there's um, sarunga sarg, which is mustard leaves. And that is typically what is used in making sarg as a dish up in the north and it's um mustard mustard uh, mustard leaves have a real bite to them they're slightly bitter um and it is a very different flavor i'd say and it takes a little bit more cooking as well because they're just thicker the sarg that you get in the indian supermarkets is is just older um older spinach and again that it, it, I wouldn't say that has the same sort of bitterness that Sarunga Sarg has. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. They are two different things. But, you know, just use what you can get hold of. Um, there's, there's no point stressing about ingredients that you can't get in your local supermarket or a Indian grocery store. But yeah, you're absolutely right. They are different. And then Skeet has asked, have you tried any other greens other than spinach? Yep. So you can use kale in this. Um, you can do exactly the same thing. Um, with this specific dish, I'm blitzing my sarg so that it goes into that gravy and it, you end up with this lovely green um, gravy at the end. But you can also make it, in, you can make this dish in different ways. You could cook your chicken and, and once that's done, you could then just slice up your spinach and add it in. It will give you a much more um, rustic finish, if you like. Um, but you could do the same with kale. You could do it with summer greens. Um, what else could you use? Um, you could use, you could use, mm, no, no, I wouldn't use cabbage or anything like that. I just think it would give a very different texture. Okay, so is everybody ready? Are we ready to move on to the next bit? I'm just going to give my chicken another little stir through. And if you do the same, you will hopefully start to see the moisture and the gravy starting to come through now from that chicken, which I will show you in a minute. Okay, so to move on then, 
as I was saying, I don't put my spinach into boiling water. Um, all I do is just heat up my pan and I let it cook with the water that's on the leaves from um, having from it being washed. So I just pop that in. My hands. And all I'm going to do is literally just turn it and it just cooks down to nothing. It, and you can do a little bit at a time and as it dies down and as it wilts, you just add a little bit more. So we'll give that a little Now I don't know whether it's just me, but I have, for some reason, I had a real craving for spinach or something green. I don't know whether it's this time of year or what it is, which is why I decided to do this dish because I just really, really needed, I think maybe it's the iron, I don't know what it is, but I just felt like I really needed lots and lots of green stuff. So. That's why we're cooking this dish, because I fancied it for my dinner tonight. And um, if that's not a good enough reason, I don't know what is. So I just use my tongs to literally just keep turning it. And you'll see that it starts to cook. It'll start to wilt down. So as with all of my dishes, I try to keep things really, really simple um, just because there's no point getting th making things complicated because at the end of the day, we want to enjoy the cooking process. We want to enjoy the eating of it. So let's just make it nice and simple for everyone to follow. So here you go. So all of that's gone in. Look, it's not even half a pan. It's just cooking away dies down I'm just going to pop a little bit more in there we go last bits going in so there's the last few bits and same thing again I'm just going to use my tongs to give that a little mix up so is everybody okay are we all in the same place please say yes please say yes now for those of you who haven't noticed we've gone for a green dish I'm in green attire today just to uh, just because why wouldn't you Right, so this is cooking down. I'm going to give you all a little bit of time because I haven't got as much spinach as the recipe suggests, so you might have more to do, but Michael, look at that. Michael's asked how much water is in the pan. So this is what I was saying. I didn't add any water into the pan. It was just an empty pan. Um, and all I do is I wash my spinach um, and the water that stays on the spinach then cooks it. So I don't, I don't put it into any water because I don't want to lose all of the lovely nutrients that we've got in there. And look, all the liquid, I mean, spinach is just essentially water. All of that liquid just comes from the spinach. So you don't really need to add anything. I didn't want to. I've gone on about it. I didn't. I don't like to blanch my um, spinach because then you have to then plunge it into cold water and all of that jazz. You can make it as complicated as you like, but I'm not going to. So that is all I'm doing. That's it. It's done. It's cooked. So I will let you all have, take a few minutes just to catch up because I'm sure you're doing doing more than me so all of my spinach and I'm gonna Kate said they are first time curry clubbers and things are going swimming. oh well done Kate that's amazing lovely to have you join where where are you joining from 
Have you said, have you told me that? I'm so pleased things are going well in your kitchen. I have had, I think, was it Sue that you did one when you went um, in a, on a barge trip and we saw the aftermath of what had happened there, which was always, which was always good. But it's quite nice seeing the state of people's kitchens afterwards um, as they're sitting down to enjoy their amazing curry that they've spent so long making. So all of that spinach, which was that huge bowl, has gone down to that. Not a lot. So I'm putting it in here. And the reason that I'm putting it in here is because I'm using um, a hand blender to blitz it. Um, you could just do it straight in the pan. That's absolutely fine. Um, I have done it a few times where it's literally just gone everywhere. So I just find a small, thin, long vessel just works a lot better um years of experience talking that is so i'm going to blitz it in here um is everybody ready in terms of um where they are with their Joni said we need to get you onto james martin's saturday kitchen oh yeah you should start a petition to do that Joni. that'd be amazing i would love to do that um we need to we need to get working as a team, get Kate, some of this going. Kate said they are from Tooting and they're cooking on an arga, so the masala's in the oven. Oh, lovely. From Tooting, you're just down the road from me, not far at all. Right, I just want to show you, this is what my um, masala looks like. It's lovely and juicy. So all of that liquid and all of the gravy there is come from that meat. And we've added no water to that. So it's, you just know it's going to be good. So I'm just going to pop that back on. Um, what make is your hand blender? Sue's Sorry, who's that? Hi, Sue. My hand blender. <laughs> I've been through a few of these in my time. So this is a wearing. This is a commercial one, um, and it's just one, one unit. This is what they use in a lot of um, the restaurants and so on. Um, it is good. There are, I, there's a... One recommendation I would always say is always go for a metal um, base bit. Um, I know you can get the ones that screw and so on. That's fine. Just make sure this bit is metal because it doesn't stain. Um, and especially if you're doing curries, if you have one that's white, it just it doesn't look very nice. So a metal one, but mine's wearing, um, but it's well worth it. Andy said, is it really 800 grams of spinach as stated on the recipe? Yeah, Andrew is getting really cross with me by, by the sounds of things. So it says 800 grams. Oh, it's a different Andrew. Okay, um, so it says 800 grams of spinach on the recipe, which is a lot. Um, yes, that is how much you can, that you should use because it, um, the, the, all of the gravy and everything is going to be mixed with this. I'm not using and I've said this before, I'm not using that volume because I'm not cooking that much chicken either. Um, so if you don't want to use that much, because it does sound like a lot, you just go, you can go down to about 400 grams. So if you don't want to use that much, that's absolutely fine, but it will cook down to not a lot. Um, and when you mix that in, it will mix in with that sauce and that masala and it will be delicious. So that's what I suggest. Okay, are um, we... Rosemary's added a bit of boiling water so her potato, potatoes start to dry out. Yeah, so if you are cooking your veggie option, so if you've got your tofu or your potatoes on the go, do keep an eye on your potatoes. You may need to add a little bit of water and stir them through. Your potatoes, if you put them in at the same time as my chicken, they're, they're going to be pretty, um, depending on what potato it is. So I would probably have, should have said this, I would recommend something like a Maris Piper, a good all-rounder, because they take less time to cook. If you're using red potatoes or a Desiree or something, they um, take much, much longer to cook. And if you wanted to, you could parboil those first and then put them in. So something that's more waxy and um, will take longer to cook. Um, <clears throat> if, um, if you are using those, you can also add water, um, more water so they cook more quickly in the masala rather than boiling them and then adding them. 
Um, but if you are cooking the potatoes, you may need to add water, just as you said, Rosemary, just to help them, just to um, bring them together so they don't dry out. And then Williams asked, do you know a good potato curry? Um, a good, <laughs> yeah. So I would use my Thariwala chicken, um, which is on the website and on the app. So use the masala from that and then just add nice big chunky potatoes into it. Um, that's probably one of my favourite. You could also put peas in there, alu um, That's a really good potato curry. And what you can then do is add more liquid. So if you want it more watery or more gravy, then you can add... Um, that into it the other thing that you can do I don't know if any of you have seen I've just launched a range of frozen sauces um, my tomato one, the rustic tomato sauce is perfect to add potatoes um, and any veggie dishes to as well so you can find out all that information on my website so I've got a range of four there's a rustic tomato there's creamy cashew there's exotic coconut and an aromatic almond um, so they're four different sauces they come to you frozen and you just put them in your freezer and then get them out and add whatever you like to them so they're suitable for vegetarians um, there's two of them suitable for vegans as well because um, the other two have got cream in them so have a look at those they're just an easy midweek curry to um, do Alejandra said would this work with fish um, this would work with fish, yes, you just need to. What I would suggest, if you were doing fish, um, I would suggest that you don't cook the fish in the tomato bit like we've done with the chicken. What I would do is make your masala, do your spinach, blitz that, and then add that um, to the masala. And then once it's all come together, then put your fish in it and let it cook in there if that makes sense. Just because obviously fish doesn't need that much cooking, so you don't want to add it and then reheat it because you'll just spoil the flavour of the fish. Okay, so I'm going to blitz my um, spinach. I've been babbling on for ages, so... probably need 800 grams of spinach so when you blitz it down oh, oh, look, at this, look at the color of that it's so amazing so when you blitz it down you literally get nothing so you would have twice the amount twice this amount if you had 800 grams in there I've got 400 there and that's that's that much that's what you need, um, that spinach. Did you take a photo of the spinach? Mm. Yeah. Just, just for Instagram for later. So once you blitz it down, make sure, so it can be quite fibrous, make sure you do it a few times just to... <laughs> my shoulder see and that's with me taking precautions right I'm just going to I know I've shown you but I think I'll just show you with a spoon rather than my finger so if you have a look look at this look at the color of that it's amazing so vibrant None of this grey, horrible spinach. But 
you can see it's still quite fibrous if you look so I'm just going to blitz it a little bit more so you see these fibers here those are the bits that are going to get stuck in your teeth unless you blitz it a bit more so I'm going to do that so do check your spinach Got it everywhere. It's a good job I'm wearing a green top. See, I thought this through. Right. Okay. So is everyone with me? I think I'm gonna just have a little wipe because it is literally gone everywhere. I'm just gonna have a little wipe down. Anybody had any accidents in their kitchen? You know me, I like to think, keep things clean. It's all gone all over the place. Da -da. Okay, how are we doing guys? I need some feedback. I'll just clean my shoulders. That's one for the wash, isn't it? Right, I'm gonna look at my chicken. Oh, look. I'm not gonna stir it this time, I'm just gonna show you exactly what it looks like and show you how much liquid you see? Look at all the juice. Oh, hang on. Hang on, that's my tea towel's gone in there. Can you see the... Look at all that juice, and that's all come from everything we've put in there. We've added nothing to that, so use that. Eloise has spinach on her wall. Oh, I'm sorry, Eloise. <laughs> See, who says Indian cooking isn't fun? Okay, so my chicken is there. If you are using breast meat or um, thigh meat that's not on the bone, the chances are that you're probably um, almost, you know, your, your chicken's probably cooked. So if it's cooked, turn it off and just let it sit for a minute. Um, and what we're going to do before we finish off this dish is we're going to start on the rice. So ideally you need to be in a place where you've blitzed your spinach, your chicken is either still bubbling away or it's cooked and it's ready to go. I'm going to pop that over here. Where can I put it? I'll put it in my... Right, hopefully, if you hear a big crash, it's because everything's fallen over. Um, so your spinach is done. I'm just going to pop that to one side. And we're going to move on to do the rice. So is everyone happy with that? Because this is... If we get this going, then we can finish off the chicken and then we're all good. And we can enjoy the rest of our Friday evening. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, if you haven't done um, already, I would ask you to wash your rice. So I've already washed my rice. When I wash my rice, I just put it in a pan like this and I put warm water in there. I very gently rub, rub through with my fingers and you'll see it gets really murky. And that's all the starch and um, all the bits and pieces that are in there. Um, and then what I do is I then pour that away and I do it again. So I will wash my rice about four times like that before um, I cook it. And that gets rid of all the excess starch. Um, rice also has trace elements of arsenic in it. So that's it's a good thing to, to make sure that you wash it. Um, it also um, is aged, so basmati rice is aged, so it sits in barrels for ages, so you just, you know, it's a good idea to just give it a wash through. And by washing it, you essentially will um, stop it from getting sticky when you cook it as well. So if you haven't washed your rice, I'm going to let you do that now. Um, for those of you who have washed it, let me know, because we can start getting the other bits um, ready, but 
Robert has volunteered to come and wash up for us. Oh, Robert, you can, can come round. Is that because you want a free meal? I'm smart, me. Steve says, hooray, the rice, this is what I joined for. Yay, the rice. Oh, this is looking so tasty. Smell, see, this is my kind of food. Proper, thick, rustic curries. Mm, yum. Okay, so, general rule of thumb with rice. One is you always wash your rice until the water runs clear. Um, number two, um, when you're cooking plain rice, it's always twice the amount of water by volume to the amount of rice. So one mug of rice will feed about three people. Um, so you add two mugs of water to that when you're cooking it. Okay. Um, and what else is my other rule of thumb? I think that's it. Oh yes. And when you're cooking, see. Good job she's here otherwise i'd forget um and then when you are cooking your rice you bring it up to a rolling boil really vigorous rolling boil so that it's steaming and all of that kind of stuff um, and then you turn it right down to the lowest setting move it to the smallest hob put the lid on and you leave it for 10 minutes don't mess with it don't stir it don't do anything um and that way you will get the most perfect, beautiful, elongated grains of rice, all individual, um, and it will be delicious. Okay, so for this dish, I've washed my rice already. Um, what we are going to add is, we're going to add a bay leaf. We are going to add some cassia bark or cinnamon, if that's what you've got. Um, we are going to add some cumin seeds, which I'm going to put into here as well. So a teaspoon of cumin seeds, so I'm just getting them all in all the bits into there. Is it possible to use brown basmati rice? Absolutely, brown rice is absolutely fine to use. Um, you just need to cook it for longer. So just make sure you know how to how long your brown basmati rice um, requires for cooking. So with brown rice, what you can do is you can cook your rice because you, quite often what you, you do is you just put lots of water in it and you just let it boil. Um, Usually it takes about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and once it's cooked, then drain it and just pop it to one side. And then you can do this spice bit and then add your rice into it um, and then just pop the lid on and just let it sort of steam through all together. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, but if you then want it to absorb fully, you need to just be very, very careful with your water measurements when you're using brown rice. Asked, what colour would the sauce be? Red pepper, makes brown. And I've done this before it went a dirty green. It tasted great, but it didn't look so good. Oh, uh, it should be. See, this is the other reason that you need that nice big volume of spinach. It should be really, really green. Um, I think you're right. I don't think mine's going to be very green because I haven't got enough um, of the spinach. But that's the other reason that you need a nice big volume of, of um, spinach. But yeah, it should be vibrant and green and delicious so let's have a look okay so what i'm gonna do i've got my rice washed i've got my spices here so cumin um green cardamom beautiful little things um just count how many you've put in if you don't like biting down on them just be aware of how many you've got in there so you can either pick them out or um, put them on your husband's plate which happens a lot in this house um bay leaf and um, my cassia bark and then in this I'm also going to add these beautiful little um, spices so this is star anise star anise gives almost like a very delicate um, aniseedy flavor they're just really really lovely they're so pretty as well so we're going to use those and then we're going to use an onion so I'm just going to slice an onion in half first just to peel it and then we're just going to um, slice this into nice thin slices and that's what we're going to pop in so I'm just going to peel it so the easiest way is to just cut it in half like that I'm also going to put some garlic in this so I'm going to chop that up with some ginger and you could either grate that but I'm just going to pop it in the 
chopper and do that do it in there so the car all you do you just sort of crack it open as we put it in but we'll, we'll i'll show you how to do that once i've got all of my ingredients ready here i'll show you exactly how to do that now the other bits that we're putting into our rice i am adding cashews you could put peanuts in if you wanted to um but i'm adding some cashews here so these are unsalted cashews um you can use salted if you want to but just be aware that you don't then add any extra salt to it because it will be salty to taste obviously So my chicken is almost done. So with my onion, so I just pop these away so you can see. I'm literally just going to just slice it. So I'm going to take the ends off. I just want nice thin slivers. And I've got just a very little onion here and I'm going to use the whole thing. Nice and fine. You don't want great big thick chunky bits in here. So nice and fine. There we go. And then what I'm going to do with my ginger and my garlic which is why I didn't wash my chop. I'm just going to chop those up in my in my chopper. And then we've got everything ready. Okay, so I've got my pan on. I'm going to add some ghee into this. I want to have a real sort of depth of flavour in here which is why I'm using ghee now if you don't want to use ghee that's absolutely fine just use some vegetable oil instead so I'm just going to put that in and then as with everything whenever you are um, starting your dish this is the point at which you add your whole spices so my cardamom all I do is literally with my fingers just crack and pop that in so each of the cardamom goes in just cracked and put those in. So the whole spices go in first. Cassia, bay leaf, um, cumin seeds and star anise. So that's all in there. I'll take a little photy. Now the same principle applies um, with your whole spices. As soon as you can smell them, you then go in with your next ingredient, okay? So we just want to get these lovely and aromatic, just get the yeast smelling delicious. Right, my chicken is looking really good and it's pretty much done. Take my lid off and let that do its thing. Okay. As soon as it's aromatic, as soon as it smells yummy, the onions are going to go in. You can, whenever you're cooking with ghee, you can, the smell of ghee is very, very different to oil as well. So um, just, just smell it and just see, you can always tell. There you go. So my aromatics are starting to come through now. I can smell the, the cumin in particular. So. In goes my onion, and I'm going to turn it down. The, I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit, just because I want to get a little bit of colour to my onions, but not a lot. Mikey said butter or red. So I use butter ghee. Um, you can use if you're obviously um, if you don't want butter ghee then veg ghee is fine or just use some oil that's absolutely fine too okay so into that goes my garlic and my ginger just 
just saute that off. Same principle, we don't want the, um, oh, still got loads in there. I don't want my um, garlic to be raw, so I make sure that we cook that through. And that's it, my little friend. I'm going to give him a wash later. Okay, so all of that has gone in. Now, I want to get a little bit of colour to it. I don't want it to go too brown, but I do want to get a little bit of colour to it. If um, you wanted to, you could also add a little bit of turmeric into here. And that will give you the lovely yellow rice um, that you get in a lot of restaurants. Um, do you know, I'd never seen yellow rice until I went to a restaurant. It's not something that we'd have at home. The only yellow rice we would have was sweet rice, um, and you have that as a dessert called zada, um, but never, never had yellow savoury rice at home. It was just a bit of a weird thing. Um, what is the best ghee brand? What is the best ghee brand? Um, there are lots and lots of different ghee brands you can use. Um, I have been, I've done a little bit of work with these guys called Darbur, organic ghee um, and their stuff is really lovely um, I've also worked with KTC um, and their um, stuff is pretty good too um, there are you know those two are quite good there's also um, in the supermarkets now you've got happy ghee as well their stuff's quite nice so yeah lots of lots of brands that you can try just make sure they're red tractor approved, which is always good. Okay, so into the onions, we've put the garlic, we've put the ginger. Um, I'm also going to add my cashews as well, so they get a nice little... Oh, hang on. No, 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 no. What? Do you want a picture of it? I'm going to rewind it, but... Oh, I can... Here, that. I'll do... No, it's no, fine. Why are you gonna... Here we go. So... <laughs> Sorry. Um, tell me when... Can't get the star off. Okay, so the <laughs> sorry about that. Um, the cashews have gone in. I just want to get them nice and toasted. And if you were using raisins or um, any fruit at this point, you could add some um, dried fruit into there. You would pop that in as well, just to. Get it all toasted up beautifully. Someone's wanting me to post the names of the ghee, so what were they? So Darbur Ghee. Yeah. Um, KTC. And then Happy Ghee is another brand. So did you see what it looked like? So it's all sort of softened. Shall I show again? So it's all softened, but it hasn't really got very much colour as such on it. So it's, um, but very, very aromatic and lots of lovely aromas coming from it. So into that then, I'm going to add the rice. And when we put the rice in, very gently, we're just going to give it a mix so it all gets coated with the ghee and gets a little bit of that... Johnny's got East End Butter Ghee. Okay, yeah. That's, good. that's fine. East End is another brand that is absolutely fine to use. Okay, so the rice has gone in. And I'm just going to mix all of that up. Now, when you do this, do it very gently. You don't want to break up those grains of rice. Okay. So... That goes in, and I'm just going to get some water. Um, and yeah, I know I'm going to get lots of comments now. I haven't measured it out, I know. So um, the other, <laughs> the other way that I do it is you just pour your water in, just coat it all. Need a little bit more. 
So I, yeah, if you want to make your own ghee, there's a recipe on the website and on the app as to how you make your own ghee at home. Really easy to do, and it is better, I would say. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm putting my water in. I can put a link, actually, can you put a link for the, um, how you make your ghee? It's on there, okay. So you put your water in, and the other way to check is you put your finger in, obviously this is cold water, don't put it in hot water, and you, the water comes up to this first mark on your finger, and that is enough water. That's the other way of checking that you've added enough. And that works with any size pan. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that up to a rolling boil. And we're going to let that cook away. The other thing I haven't done actually is I am gonna add a little bit of salt into the rice as well. Can you recommend a good beer or wine with this dish? Oh, good beer or wine. Mm. You know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Those, who, those of you who know me know exactly what I'm going to say. So for me, with most Indian food, it's all about the bubbles. So I would always say a really nice champagne works amazingly with Indian food. Um, and if you don't believe me, you have to try it. Um, it's, it. It's just delicious. It's one of the best things in the world. Um, if you are into your um, whites, if you've ever had a Jurin Song set, um, that's always a good option as well. Right, so all I've done is I've just swapped the pans over. I've got my rice on um, a nice high um, temperature just so that it starts to boil through. And my chicken is pretty much done now. And it's looking and smelling delicious. So I just need to know where you guys are with your... Um, McGeegan's Black Shiraz. <laughs> That's fine. I don't think I've had that. Right, I'm just going to try and wash my... Actually, let's use this one. Right, how are we doing, guys? Is everybody's rice on? Can you give me an indication? Oh, no, I've just dropped it. I'm not doing very well here. Um, how are we doing? Is your rice on so that we can finish our chicken? Give me a thumbs up, guys. Debbie says a red Rioja. Red Rioja, I like a Rioja, I have to say. Um, I, for me, I just find red a little bit heavy with um, Indian food. It's, and the other thing is, it's quite difficult with Indian food to find just what, you know, because what you tend to do when you have an Indian meal is you have a few dishes, so it's quite difficult to match one dish with one, with, with a specific wine. Gordon um, said, star anise is great in a gin tonic. <laughs> it is, I've heard that before. Um, sapphire, what's it called? I'm going a bit mad. Um, oh, I forgot the name of it. It'll come back to me in a minute. Right. Okay. Are we all good? We're going to do this last bit. So I'm just turning my, um, chicken down to a fairly low heat. If you've got meat on the bone... You should be seeing that it's it's essentially just starting to just come away from the bone and it's all cooked through and it's looking pretty delicious. Bombay Sapphire, that's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. So Bombay Sapphire has all of those lovely, um, if you look at the bottle, it's got all down the side, it's got the engravings of all the spices that are in it. Um, so that has cassia bark in it and it has... Um, I think it's got cardamom in it um, but yeah have a look at those there's some lovely aromatics in in a good, Robert loves good gin Indian lager. Indian food. 
Uh, well, yeah, a lot of people do. You know, and again, the thing with the lager is it's the bubbles. It just works really, really well um, with Indian food. So, yep, yeah, totally agree with you. So that is coming to a boil. Can just take a pick of that. So my rice is starting to come to a boil. And when um, I mean a rolling boil, I mean a really vigorous rolling boil. Um, because you want it to get to a point where it's starting to almost steam and... and because you're losing some of the moisture through that um, evaporation. So we want that to come to a really nice boil. And then what you do is you turn it down to the lowest setting and you put a lid on and then leave it. Don't mess with it. Um, the other thing that's really good when you're cooking rice is a nice wide base pan because the way in which the rice cooks, it's got a smaller depth of rice to cook through. If you've got a lot of rice in a little pan, it's going to have that much higher depth to cook through. So um, a nice wide base pan is always good. So I'm going to pop that on there and we'll come back to that. Right. So back to this chicken. Final, final, final bit that we're doing is we're going to add our spinach into it. So all I want you to do is literally just pour your spinach in. Yummy. Look at the colour of that. It just looks amazing. Now, ideally, we don't really want to add any more liquid to this because we don't want this to be watery. We want it to all come together and get really nice and thick. Just going to scoop that out and we're going to stir this all in. Oh, I think I need to show you what it looks like. <laughs> this is when I get really excited. So look. Oh, excuse my tea towel, but look. Look at the colours. Who said Indian food isn't vibrant and delicious and amazing? It is. Right, I'm going to mix all of that through. Yum. So mine is looking lovely and green. Now, be careful now because as you cook this, the, the way that the sauce sort of comes together is a bit like... A volcano so it will bobble and it will pop up so just be very 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 careful because I don't want you to burn yourselves now at this point you can um, ideally what you should do is just let it cook and come together so you've got it on um, highish temperature because what we're doing is we're just bringing that together and we essentially want it to just dry out a little bit you want you want some sauce there but we're just going to bring all of that together and if i show you what it looks like you're going to be amazed look at that isn't that a beautiful thing? Yum. So I'm just going to let that bubble and simmer away for a little bit while I have a little wipe down. And get rid of all of this mess that I've created. So how is your kitchen looking, guys? Are we, uh, are we going to be in trouble or are we, are we okay? I've got... So apart from spinach on the walls, are we all right? So I'm just going to give this a little stir fry. It's so good. Right, I'm just going to have a very quick, a very quick little taste. We're allowed to do that because we've cooked it. So I'm just going to have a little, a little taste just to make sure that seasoning is okay. Oh, 
I might need a little bit of salt. Mm. Now, remember, you must season because without the seasoning, you're going to lose quite a bit of other flavours that need to come through. So if you don't season correctly, you won't get the heat coming through of the chilli. So when you are seasoning, you shouldn't taste the salt. It should just enhance the flavour. Okay, I'm just going to have another little taste. See, no double dipping, I'm just... Mm. Yum. Yum, 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 yum. See, now I get the heat through because this... Oh, that's lovely. So, it's quite um, earthy in its flavour, but it's also... It's got almost like that summery lightness, and that's the spinach that's just making it really, really tasty. Okay, so into this, to finish this dish off, what I'm going to do is, somebody said earlier, you haven't put any garam masala in there. So garam masala is a, it's an aromatic, it's a very gentle aromatic. Um, and the reason, or the way in which I use it, is that your gentle aromatics go in at the end of the cooking process. So once your dish is finished and it's complete, and you're about to take it to the table, you then add your gentle aromatics. And what that does is it brings everything that you've put into that dish together. So now is the time, once you are happy and you've cooked it down and you're happy with the consistency and the thickness of the sauce and all of that kind of stuff, and your dish is done, it's at that point you add your final aromatics and your final seasonings so I'm going to turn that off and into there I am adding a teaspoon of garam masala and and only if you want to you don't have to you put a couple of, oops whoops a couple of tablespoons of butter and that just adds bleh, just adds a real richness to the final flavours of this dish. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave that, I'm going to pop the lid on and I'm just going to let that absorb those aromatics and just take in all of the deliciousness that we've put in there. And whilst we're doing that, I'm going to have a little clear down because the rice is almost done as well. So the reason that you shouldn't cover spinach when it's cooking is that it takes all the colour out of the spinach. So rather than getting that beautiful, vibrant green, you end up with a horrible grey mess. And that's the same for um, a lot of green veg as well. So broccoli and things like that, just don't cover them. It just, the steam, it's just too hot in there for it. So yeah, I, I would agree with that sentiment. Right, so I'm going to turn my rice off. So I haven't messed with it. I haven't touched it. I'm, so when I cook rice, I, I'm not very good now because I, I very rarely time it. Um, but I almost, it's like I get a heartbeat that it's ready or I can, I don't know what it is, but I can, so I've turned it off. I'm not going to take the lid off. I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to hope that it's ready. Um, it's not the best way to teach class, is it? Hope. Let's just hope it works. Um, so whilst we're doing that, have a little clear down. Now, can you tell me, guys, if you are all with me or have I lost you along the way? I hope I haven't. I hope we're all in a good place. Um, and I'm going to get ready to dish this bad boy up. Okay. How are we doing? Have we got any comments? How are we doing? Fresh sag is a must. Most takeaways use tin minutes dressing, obviously. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so are we ready? Are we are we all in a happy place? 
<laughs> Let's hope the wife is kept. Okay. So, where are we? Five past eight. Oh, I've, I've taken a lot of your evening up this evening, but hey ho. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the rice. Fingers crossed. Ta da! Look at that. It looks beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. <coughs> So I'm just going to show you. So that's how it looks. All of the water has been absorbed. It's, ow, it's hot. Yum. But you should get those lovely aromatics coming from it. It smells amazing. The star anise you can really get. It's really coming through. So that's ready. My Sarg is ready. Oh, oh. So I'm going to give that all a mix through. So the butter's all melted. Oh, it looks delish. Right, so I'm going to dish this up. And it's looking that beautiful green vibrant colour that I wanted. Put, put that in on the top just so that you can see the chicken. Put a little bit more The sauce in oh, the plate up again. So there is my murg sargola, and I'm just going to get some of the lovely rice. With all of those lovely cashews. Someone said this is the best recipe you've done on live so far. Oh, how very kind. Who is that someone? Hi Ads, I'm glad you've enjoyed the live. It's always nice to have new people join and chat and share their experiences. There we go. And there is your amazing fragrant rice cooked with lots and lots of whole spices. So there you have it. This is our Friday night curry club um, done. And I hope you've enjoyed it. So we've got sargwala murg or murg sargwala. Um, and we've got this lovely fragrant aromatic rice. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've cooked along with me, I hope you've been able to keep up or I hope I haven't been too slow, whichever way that is. Um, thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you and, and, and have you join me in my kitchen. Um, as always, um, what I say to you is if you've been cooking along, please, please, please take a picture of the dish that you've cooked. Um, if you haven't been cooking along and are intending to do it later on in the week, then still take a picture of your dish. Um, please do share them with me on Instagram, share them with me on my app um, and make sure that you give me a thumbs up for this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe um, because it's the only way that I can keep you informed of all the lovely stuff that I'm doing. Um, give, what was the other thing I need to say? Subscribe. Yeah, make sure you turn the bell on. So subscribe and turn the bell on because that's the only way you'll know when I'm doing the next um, live and, and, and all the ingredients that we need. Just as a little heads up, next week, I am doing um, the Friday Night Curry Club in conjunction with um, Kern Ricon, who are the um, guys that I'm working with at the moment, and we're going to do a dish, um, a vegan dish for Veganuary, and it's going to be done in a pressure cooker. So if you've got a pressure cooker, then get that pressure cooker out. Um, if you haven't got one, 
you can and you want to buy one you're you know go to the website we've got that discount there for you so that you can um, join in they've got all different sizes all different price ranges as well so do have a look um, but that should be really really good fun and I will be posting the recipe on Wednesday and I'll be posting the ingredients on Wednesday but for now thank you for joining me it's been a lot of fun I hope you've had fun and I hope you enjoy your curry so thank you very much take care and I will